with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, I will love you, Lord. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, I will love you, Lord. I will love my neighbor as myself. Yes, I will love my neighbor as myself. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, I will love you, Lord. With all my heart. With all my soul, with all my strength, I will love you, Lord, and I will love my neighbor as myself. Yes, I will love my neighbor as myself. With all my heart, with all my soul. With all my strength, I will love you, Lord. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, I will love you, Lord. I will love you, Welcome to our Sunday online service. I'm Jen Melkai, and I'm thrilled that you've joined us today. It's not too late to join Financial Peace University Sunday and Tuesdays at 6 p.m. It's also not too late to join a small group for our Lenten series, The 12 Neighbor Project. And calling all ladies out there, we have a woman's workshop starting Friday, March 5th at 6.30 p.m. If you have any questions or want to sign up for any of the things mentioned, you can call me at the office or visit trinitychurchfamily.com. One year ago, this coming March, our world was turned upside down. We've missed a lot of traditional experiences, but out of the turmoil, some blessings have come to pass. One of the blessings has been the formation of a new musical group here at Trinity called Winging It. This group will present a concert on Saturday, March 6 at 6 p.m. They represent the hope that God offers everyone when we trust in him, no matter what happens in our lives. Winging it, you know, right wing, left wing. Both taste good to me with a little hot sauce. If you really want to help out our ministry, please consider gifting online. We wouldn't be here without your generous support. And as you know, we always celebrate our 20th online giver. And this week it's dun 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 da Robert Dowell, congratulations. Now, as we prepare for worship, please make sure you have a little bread or cracker, some wine or juice, so you can celebrate Holy Communion with us. As we begin today, we welcome you, Pastor Brian. Greetings and welcome to worship. Today is St. Valentine's Day. Did you know that St. Valentine was a real person? He was noted for caring folks while he was in prison, caring for other prisoners, writing them notes that later they called Valentines. He was ultimately executed because of his faith, but he showed us how to truly love and care for the broken. Our theme today is talking about from Isaiah chapter 58, how to spend ourselves on behalf of others. It's the theme of Lent. It's the theme of Valentine's Day. It's the theme of our service that we begin now in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Wonderful, so wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross is broken, mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart is fully known. How glorious, how beautiful you are. Beautiful one. 
says to Isaiah the prophet, tell my people about their sins. They worship me, claiming that they are eager to know my ways and obey my laws. But the people ask, why should we fast if the Lord never notices? Why should we go without food if he pays no attention? The Lord says to them, your fasting ends in quarreling and strife. Do you think this kind of fasting will make me listen to your prayers? The kind of fasting I want is this. 
Remove the chains of oppression and the yoke of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Share your food with the hungry and open your homes to the homeless, the homeless poor. Give clothes to those who have nothing to wear and do not refuse to help your own relatives. Then my favor will shine on you like the morning sun and my presence will protect you on every side. When you pray, I will answer you. When you call to me, I will respond. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with a pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always and he will satisfy your needs. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Gene Vernetti is listed in the Guinness Book of World Records for something very unusual. He has the largest collection of Do Not Disturb signs in the world. In his travels to 131 countries, Vernetti has amassed a collection of 2,915 Do Not Disturb signs in a variety of languages. Only 60 more and he will have a sign from every country. Who would have thought that this would be a universal sign? Do Not Disturb. On a second thought, that is the sentiment of many, many people. Just leave me alone. I mind my own business. Stay out of my life. In the first book of the Bible in Genesis, God asks Cain, where is your brother? Cain's reply is classic. What? Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Perhaps you've said that before. The point in that lesson, though, is yes, we are to be concerned about one another's welfare, our brothers and sisters. In our reading from Isaiah chapter 58, the nation of Israel has fallen on hard times, very similar to our country today. No one listens to each other. Less than 1% of the people have all the wealth. More and more people are out of work. Isaiah speaks God's word. Tell my people about their sins. They worship me, claiming that they're eager to know my ways and obey my laws, but your fasting 
ends in quarreling and strife. Sound familiar? Here, fasting lends and ends in pointing fingers with malicious talk. I hear that all the time, malicious talk, pointing fingers. Do you think this kind of fasting will make me listen to your prayers, says God? As we prepare for Lent on this Valentine's Day Sunday, our small group series called 12 Neighbors will help us learn how to truly love others and become a brother's keepers, just the way God designed us to be. In America, if someone is struggling with a physical problem, needing a job or food, we try to solve their problem, most often by trying to find material help for them, giving them food or clothing. More often than not, what we really need to do is just be there for them, listen to them and, and let them know that we understand. The Bible says, I may give away everything I have and even give up my body to be burned, but if I have no love, this does me no good. It's 1 Corinthians 13. Learning to open the eyes of our heart is central to being a Christ follower. That's what we're going to be learning this Lenten season. It's what we need to learn all the time as Christians. I read about a dad who was invited to an office party. Those on staff attended the party and they were supposed to bring a gag gift. A gift so worthless that people would laugh when, when it was opened up. As this man searched among his things for an ideal gag gift at home, he happened to come across a, a small taco warmer made out of straw. It had the lid uh, on the, the, the lid, the letters tacos scrawled flimsily with yarn. The perfect gift, what a piece of junk, he thought. He wrapped it up, headed for the party. That gift, when it was unwrapped, everybody laughed. The next morning during breakfast, he told the tale to his family. Even as he finished the story, he noticed tears streaming down his precious daughter's face. Suddenly, he remembered that this had been a gift from her. She had made it for him years earlier. He found himself weeping along with his daughter. At that moment, the taco box was no longer a gag gift. It was more precious than silver. He wept to think that he had so callously forgotten the true value of the gift, for it represented his daughter's heart. In that moment, God spoke to the father as well. God said, how often have you forgotten the value of the gift that I gave you too? I gave you the most precious thing I had. I gave my heart. I gave my son. He realized what God was teaching me, said that dad. I went and retrieved that box, and now I display that taco box proudly, learning to open the eyes of our hearts. It's central to being a Christ follower, especially on St. Valentine's Day Sunday. Learning to see others as God sees them takes away our judgmentalism, doesn't it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die for all of us, for the world. He wants us to look at those who struggle with Christ-like eyes, to spend time with those who struggle and give them not just stuff, but ourselves. Many fathers figure giving a gift to their child or spending quality time with them is what it's all about. But James Dobson says, no. For children, love is spelled T-I-M-E. Lots of time, copious amounts of time. And the same is true for people in general. If you spend yourself on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. The Lord will guide you always and will satisfy your needs. Now, what does it mean to spend yourself? Well, 
I remember telling you about being a student at Marquette University years ago. I would walk to classes on Wisconsin Avenue, and every now and then there would be somebody with their hand out, some panhandler. Hey, you got some change, you got a quarter, you got a dollar. And I just kind of turn my head aside. I'd say, hey, no, I don't have any. I would just always be embarrassed not knowing exactly what to do. One time we were talking with campus ministry and I shared that quandary and we had a great conversation about it. So I was prepared. The next time somebody had their hand out, he said, hey, I'm hungry. Do you have any money for some food? And I was ready. I was ready to spend myself. I said, hey, I've got a couple bucks. There's a restaurant right over there. Why don't we go on over? And why don't I share breakfast with you? So instead of giving him money, I gave him my time. So we went over. He was kind of smelly. He could use a little dental work, too. His teeth were all over the place. But we sat down, and I just asked him all kinds of questions about his life. We had a great conversation. Probably about two hours we were together. You know, I never saw him again, but I will never forget the day I spent myself with a panhandler on the streets of Milwaukee, in Milwaukee, on Wisconsin Avenue. I blessed him, but he blessed me as well. One thing I learned, one thing I learned when I meet someone like that, ever since then I learned I never turn anyone away. I always try to give somebody who might be a panhandler something. I don't even care what they do with the money. They can do whatever they want. That's their business. My business for my soul is to give, but I always lead them, leave them with these words, God bless you. You know that. For me, that's what our scripture means when God says, spend yourself. That's what I did. I didn't just give money to say, go away, you bother me, take this money, get out of my hair. I spent time, and these days, Whenever I see anybody on the side of the road, I want to spend a little time having a conversation with them and bringing God into the experience. I know that we don't often feel open to strangers. Many of us carry around an obvious attitude that shouts, what does it shout? Do not disturb. We have that sign just written on our face when people come into our presence. But that's why Christians observe Lent. It's a season of the church year where we reboot our spiritual hearts. Do you know that a study from the Nielsen Group found that in 2018, before COVID hit, American adults spent more than 11 hours per day watching, reading, listening, or simply interacting with media? Much of that time was plain old entertainment. We have the time, don't we? But we do, have the in do we have the inclination to be available and to listen to others? A husband said, my wife constantly, constantly complains that I never listen to her or something like that. I don't know. I wasn't really listening. I get it. We're all like that at times. That's why when we meet in a small group at least once a year during Lent, it's helpful in learning how to listen and remembering what it's like to be Jesus to others. Several years ago, when Mother Teresa was still alive, she visited New York City. She walked the streets, visited the food pantries, met the neediest people in the city. Afterward, she was speaking at a university and she declared in a speech that America is the poorest country she has ever encountered. She went on to explain that of all the people she met, none of them have seemed to be lacking in material assets. They might have been poor, but they were able to get food. They were able to get a roof over their heads. They were able to get clothing. They had more food, clothing, shelter options than most places in the world, but they were emotionally impoverished. 
spiritually destitute. They lacked relationships and community support. She said, I also noticed that some of the poorest people in the world live in the biggest houses. This country of yours, she said, is the most impoverished I've ever experienced. Max Licato, the famous Christian writer, he said, there are many ways that people can be poor. Visit a high school sometime. Look for the teenagers already feeling the chilling winds of rejection. They are easy to find. They're the ones with acne, greasy hair, wearing clothing that's no longer cool. They sit alone at lunch and stay at home on weekends. They orbit around the class stars, longing for acceptance, yet increasingly convinced they don't deserve it. Lonely, left out. But Jesus would find a place for them. He would find a place for them because he cares, and he cares unconditionally. This week, as we observe Ash Wednesday, acknowledging that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and declaring that we want to be the person God designed us to be, what could our response be? How could we respond to these lonely people, these broken people, these impoverished individuals? Well, perhaps spending an hour and a half each week with a small group for just six sessions now, learning to care for others, because we've got something good to share with the world. Wow, it could transform our lives. It could transform others' lives. We will be the losers if we hang out a sign that says, do not disturb. If we look at the world through the eyes of Jesus, we will become disturbed, disturbed enough to want to take Jesus into the streets. If we do, we, you, will be the blessed one. Amen.
Jesus calls us to spend ourselves, to help the poor and oppressed. The example he showed us while he was here on earth, teaching his disciples how to care for others. And then on that last night, he took the bread and after blessing it, he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take and eat, this is my body. This is given for you, remember me. In the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you, for your salvation. As many times as you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, remember my promise to you, my salvation for each of you. And now we remember our Lord and Savior, by saying the prayer that he taught us, lifting our hands in submission. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now if you would take your communion kit and remove the wafer. And again, listen to Jesus' words. Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And as you take the cup, remember again his final words. Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. And now, may the Lord's body and his blood strengthen you and keep you all in his grace. As we conclude our service on this Valentine's Day Sunday, please remember that this Wednesday we will be having a 6 p.m. drive-in worship service. It'll be unique and different. We will also provide the opportunity from 11 to noon for you to drive through and receive the imposition of ashes, remembering that you are dust and to dust you shall return. We talked about spending ourselves today. I'm reminded of my small group. Several years ago, we provided once a month breakfast for pads for the homeless. You know, we would slap the food, and it was good food on their plates as they went on through. Before we began, we always said a prayer for the folks who were there. But after a while, one of those sessions as we were about to eat, we invited one of the recipients of the food to offer the prayer. Instead of us offering and giving everything to them, they became a part of the process. And this man who prayed, the dignity and power of that prayer, I will not forget. When we give to others, remember they are children of God. And remember, we need to do it together. My prayer is this Lent, you'll get connected in a small group. And along with me, we'll reach out to give ourselves. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.
as we go. What is our mission? To help my neighbor make a positive, life-changing connection with Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. May you find joy and peace in your day always. If you like this segment, you can hit subscribe, like, and share it out.